A great morning to you. You are still watching the platform and I welcome you to the platform studio. My name is Toyin Pojoye Made and today the panelists will be discussing some of the views that have been raised by the two speakers we've listened to. The panelists on the platform today, number one I have Mr. Harold Obasan, the CEO of Phyllis Brown Offshore. I have Ndidi Umuneli. Uh, she's a social entrepreneur, the founder of Leap Africa and the co-founder of Ace Foods. And the last but not the least, I have Obinia Abajwe, the CEO of IGA HMO Limited. And so thank you all for joining us thank on you. the platform this morning. Thank you. So we just listened to two speakers. Mrs. Nina Kikugwe, who talks about personal wealth management, and uh, Mr. Bimbo Lashre, who talked about opportunities in this new, as he called it, unfolding economic climate. But one of the things I want us to first talk about is side hustle versus full-time job, which two of them had interesting, almost different views on. What are your views on having a side hustle or a full-time job or multiple streams of income? Well, um, thanks for that. It's important that people do things properly, all right, because ultimately the commitments that people make in the contracts that they enter is so important you can't build a relationship or a nation or a society of people that don't respect contracts so what is a side hustle if you've committed your entire time to someone it's important that people disclose upfront whatever arrangements they have because very easily they can fall into situations of conflict of interest now these things are important in any serious environment and that's why I would think that people should think very deeply about this. So you can have a side hustle as long as you give full disclosure to your employee or to your employer. And they agree. And they agree. But you do agree that we need multiple streams of income. That doesn't happen overnight. So people shouldn't be deceived to think that your streams of income will start overnight. It takes a while, it takes time, and those things are things that must be explained and transparent. If you can't account literally in public for all the money that you've made or that you spend and all that, then you should ask yourself really, is that money genuine? And still talking about streams of income, which is why we have so many get-rich-quick schemes and all the things she talks about, MMM and all of that. What do you think has led to this and how can people begin to make money the right way, as the case may be, Didi? Well, I definitely believe that entrepreneurship is a very critical pathway out of poverty. There's no world, part of this world, where people make money overnight. Mm -hmm. Hard work, a commitment to excellence, consistency are key mm -hmm. to wealth creation. Mm -hmm. And I think that the mentality that you could can make money overnight is a fallacy. Mm. And we need to be very, very clear about it. Now, the second thing is, you have to look internally and figure out what your passions are and what you are going to do. And I know that we talk about that often all over the country. But yet, there's this copycat mentality where my brother is making money, so I need to make money. And he's making money overnight, so I need to do it. So I would really suggest that everybody listening today needs to think about what their passions are and make a list of those passions and then prioritize them and then determine where they will spend their time, their limited time. Now, it means you have to do some research. You need to understand what your competitive and comparative advantage are. You need to understand who the players are in that space and what value you have to add and how sustainable that value is. If the barriers to entry are too low in that entrepreneurship journey, anybody can copy. Absolutely. So you need to figure out what you're going to do that's going to make you stay and succeed and generate income and profit. Hmm. Still talking about entrepreneurship, one of the things Mr. Lashery said was obviously the fact that you're an intellectual. Not everybody is called to be an entrepreneur. But we also hear another story these days because it seems there are no jobs, so everybody should be a business owner. I would come to you. What is your take on that? How do I know I'm an entrepreneur? Should I start a business? Well, that's interesting because um, I started off as, uh, as, um, as a worker and, um, I mean, in paid employment. And... Um, even when I started, I realized that um, I, had a, I had a flair for business. So usually it will be something that is innate in you. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. And also not ev everybody can be in paid employment. So I've done both of them. And somehow, usually you start off, I started off in paid employment. But I realized quite quickly that, you know, I, I was the kind of pers person that needed my space and my time. And the um, paid employment um, environment was too rigid for me. So that's, 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 usually you would know. You would know. You would know, yes. You okay, know. fantastic. We have to cut back to the platform live sessions now for the next speaker, Professor Abdul Ganyu Gariba.
powered by Covenant Christian Center.